Hello, everyone. This is my real pleasure to be part of this TMI conference. Many thanks to the organizers for giving me an opportunity to present our recent work on Spinterface with uh, Fullery. So this is kind of organic Spintonics work. Uh, my, by the way, my name is Subhan Kapedant. I'm an associate professor at National Institute of Science, Education and Research, NICER in India. So as we move on, we will see the importance of these pictures. Before I go to the talk, I'd like to thank my group for their contribution for carrying out this work. I also like to uh, thank many funding agencies for their very generous support. And I like to thank uh, many collaborators in particular for the organic spintronics work. Uh, I like to thank Professor Thomas Buckel and his uh, colleagues from Prussian Center Munich in Germany and uh, Professor uh, Bishwarup Sarpati for the TEM. And recently we have started collaboration with Professor Hassan Ali from INST. So uh, let's have a little bit of introduction. Just imagine you have a ferromagnetic thin film deposited on a substrate. The ferromagnetic thin film has certain thickness and uh, it has certain magnetic property. Just imagine now you deposit a non-magnetic organic semiconductor on top of the same film and you call this as system two. In principle, then you expect the magnetic properties to be same because the ferromagnetic material is the same with same thickness. However, something interesting will occur at the interface that we call as interface, which will change the total or the global magnetic properties. That's very interesting. And it can be understood in the following schematics uh, given by San Vito and colleagues. It's a very nice paper, where they showed, just imagine if there is a ferromagnet, and then it has density of states. So there is a you know, splitting at the formulable, which is uh, showing that it is ferromagnetic. And you have just imagined there is organic molecule, which has no ferromagnetic behavior, as you can see from the uh, density of state diagram. So there is basically no splitting. Now, uh, if you bring this organic molecule next to the ferromagnetic substance, depending on its orientation, you see now the uh, splitting will occur in the density of states at the formulable. And that means the organic molecule, which was previously non-magnetic, now is becoming a ferromagnet. There are many uh, organic molecules and uh, we have considered mostly the fullerene or C60. That means it consists of 60 carbon atoms. So carbon is a low atomic uh, number element. So therefore the spin orbit coupling in C60 is very low. Uh, and it does not contain any hydrogen. Therefore there will be also very little hyperfine interaction. Now, if you look the orbital uh, uh, occupancy of carbon, you see there is empty orbitals, uh, basically in the 2p. So therefore it can take electrons if there is a possibility. And basically when you bring a ferromagnetic metal next to the carbon, then there can be charge transfer through uh, sp uh, hybridization and you can have ferromagnetism in carbon. So that's basically the uh, topic, what we are going to discuss. So this is a very nice paper from the group of Professor Oscar Cespedes, where they have taken a multi-layer of cobalt and C60, and they performed polarized neutron electrometry, and they found at the interface, the C60 or the carbon is basically getting some magnetic moment. However, unfortunately, the interface magnetic moment uh, across the stack is basically non-uniform. So it was getting different kind of magnetic moment. So attention should be given how to improvise the magnetic moment, how you can get, uh, you know, uh, uniform magnetic moment at the interface and so on. Then this is another phenomenal paper, uh, Borag et al from Paris. So they basically shown that they took a very uh, thin uh, cobalt film and then they deposit basically C60 of different thicknesses. And they have shown that by, Putting the C60, you can basically control the magnetic anisotropy from in plane to out of plane. So basically perpendicular anisotropy that you could get simply by depositing C60. It's all because of the full thing. So with this little modification, there are many other papers, uh, but I just uh, you know showed a very a few representative ones. Then there are what are the open questions at the moment? The point is how much you can actually make the C60 magnetic at the interface. Then well, you have an interface, you have a spin interface at, uh, between the ferromagnet and the uh, organic molecule. Then the point is how this interface will affect 
the global magnetization universal, and in particular, the domain structure of the magnetism. Then what kind of ferromagnetic symptom you can take? What will be the effect of the crystallinity on the spin torque phase? Then finally, if you have a spin torque phase, how the, you know, the anisotropy will change. So these are some open questions and to address that. So we have uh, studied a few systems. For instance, we have taken a polycrystalline uh, iron film deposited on silicon substrate. So this is the spotting chamber, which has both DCRF as well as the thermal evaporation inside one chamber. So we can deposit basically the metals by spottering and the uh, C60 by uh, thermal evaporation without breaking the vacuum. And because of the, uh, the chamber design, we always have an angle of incidence from the uh, deposition target to the substrate normal. So it's about 30 degrees. That means this uh, way, if you deposit your magnetic films, it will basically get an in-plane uniaxial anisotropy. So uh, that's the simple explain, uh, I mean, introduction to the chamber and the samples. Now let's have a look to the cross-sectional TM images of the iron C60 pi layers. Here we have deposited iron on silicon substrate. So basically the iron film is polycrystalline. We have taken iron of different thicknesses. And as you see from cross-sectional TM, so you have the columnar growth of iron and obviously the C60 is amorphous and there is not much interdiffusion. And from the uh, MOC loops, uh, if you compare the single layer to the bilayer, you actually do not see much difference. Uh, the uh, reversal process more or less uh, looks similar. However, if you look the domain images, which have been taken by magneto optic core microscope, you see for the single layer, the domains are larger in width compared to the bilayer samples with C60 where the domain width is lower. So this is one significant information that the spin interface is actually making domain engineering. So basically it is making smaller domains. Then if you want to extract the magnetic movement from the spin interface, uh, we, we have performed the polarized neutron voltometry, which is basically a very simple technique uh, and very nice in a way that you can get depth selective information from the multi-layer stack. So you come with the new, some polarization with the neutrons. So it interacts with the magnetization of the sample. Then the neutron is reflected with certain change in polarization. Now, if you do the polarization analysis, you can actually get both structural and magnetic information. So what do you do? You basically measure at the saturation. Then you feed that data, then get the thickness, density, roughness, etc., just like XR x-ray reflectivity, then you go to the coercivity and remanence or other fields during the magnetization reversal. And from those PNR data, you can fit to get the magnetic movement of the sample, the any uh, interface uh, magnetization and so on. So uh, we have performed the PNR data analysis, let's say for uh, the sam uh, samples with variable iron thicknesses, here I show the data for 3.5 nanometer and 7.5 nanometer. In both the cases, we see the magnetic uh, C60, which is about 1.1 nanometer in this case and about 1.5 nanometer. And the magnetic movement is about 1.5 mu per cage, okay? So if you go to a little bit higher thickness, so the uh, C60 thickness is about 1.8 nanometer and you get the magnetic movement nearly two meters. So this uh, set of data basically tells that when you deposit C60 on a polycrystalline iron, it depends on the thickness and you, you, the magnetic movement of C60 slightly gets enhanced uh, with the thickness of the ferro. Okay, now if you want to look about anisotropy, you see for the single layer, uh, basically you get anisotropy about 2.1, 10 to the power four joule per meter cube. This anisotropy has been observed uh, or measured by the uh, ferromagnetic resonance spectroscopy. You plot the resonance field versus the angle, uh, basically between the EG axis to the uh, applied magnetic field. And uh, by that uh, analysis, you get this K2. But if you compare <clears throat> the bilayer case, you see there is a reduction in anisotropy. So unfortunately for the polycrystalline field, we realize although there is domain engineering, basically the domain size gets smaller by the spin interface, but the and isotropy is also getting reduced, which is not so good. Now, to compare the effect of EP, the uh, 
the uh, crystalline quality, we took now the same iron film, but on a deposited on an MGO substrate. And we know iron and MGO has good lattice matching. So you can get epidexial iron film. And this is since secondary ion, uh, mass spectroscopy, <clears throat> which shows that there is a very thin interdiffusion, less than one nanometer. And by again performing similar polarized neutron reflectometry analysis, we found that, okay, there is a little bit of interdiffusion, less than about 0.5 nanometer, but the magnetic C60 is about two nanometer and with a very high magnetic movement about three mu bar per k. I think this is the largest magnetic movement induced in such interface reported so far. Now, uh, well, this work was uh, highlighted as the, uh, one of the highlight in MSJ annual report. And if you look now, the magnetized reversal process, as I said earlier, our, you know, our group is working intensely uh, looking at the magnetized reversal processes, basically from the effect of symmetry. And you see the hysteresis loop at different angle between the EG axis to the magnetic field for the single layer. And this is for the bilayer with the C60. Uh, without going into details, definitely you can see there is strong modification of the magnetization level. Uh, reversal process. And that's because of the spin interface. If you look in detail about the domain structure, for instance, this is high equal to 45 degrees. And you see for the single layer and the bilayer, the, the domains are a little different and the reversal process is becoming faster for the bilayer sample. Okay. And if you look a little bit at like other angle, like 50 degrees, you see for the bilayer sample, the reversal is much more complicated and the domains are also different from the single. It's all because the, the spin interface is basically, you know, helping in making the magnetization reversal faster or uh, making new processes. So kindly go through these papers if you want to go into it. Now let's look at about the anisotropy. As I said earlier, for the polycrystalline film, your anisotropy was getting less, but for the epidexial film, as you see, the anisotropy is getting two order magnitude enhanced for the bilayer. So this is very nice that for the epitaxial film, the anisotropy is getting enhanced. Now, let's go to another system with cobalt. And uh, here we have deposited cobalt on silicon substrate. That means cobalt is again polycrystalline. And we see, unfortunately, less magnetic movement, about one mu bar uh, in the C60. And uh, similarly, we have also looked at the magnetization reversal processes. The domains here gets uh, bigger compared to the other cases for iron where it is smaller. And if you look at the anisotropy here, the anisotropy is getting little enhanced. In iron case, for the polycrystalline case, the anisotropy was getting less, but here it was slightly getting enhanced. So these are the information from the in-plane magnetized thin films. We are also working on cobalt iron boron and other systems. So due to lack of time, I'm not going into details. However, I would like to go to the other system, which is a perpendicularly magnetized system. So all the uh, systems which I just showed uh, until now, they are basically in-plane magnetized uh, films and C60 was deposited on top of that. Now let's take a system which is perpendicularly magnetized because the PMS systems are more interesting from uh, application point of view because uh, they're having very high anisotropy, which is good to kind of stabilize them. And it is very difficult to destabilize by thermal energy. So here we took platinum cobalt platinum, which is a very model typical uh, perpendicularly magnetized system. And here we, we, we saw the platinum cobalt platinum. So basically without C60, this is the hysteresis slope, then the typical bubble domains come uh, for the, this kind of system. Now, if you look for the C60 based sample, you see the, the domains get significantly enhanced. Please note that the scale of these images are set. So for the sample without C60, the domains are huge, but with the C60, the domains are small. Now we also looked at the relaxation process. Basically you kind of uh, go to the negative saturation, then you drive your magnetic field somewhere close to the coercivity and you fix your Gman energy. Now let the magnetization relax over time and you just record images. From those images, you extract the net gray scale, which is directly proportional to the magnetization as a function of time and you fit with those relaxation uh, kind of exponential behavior. From that, we are looking at the tau value and we have looked for the same field for both the samples without C60 and with C60. And as you may see, with C60 basically sample two, the relaxation time is much faster. That's very good that 
the spindle phase is making the relaxation faster. So the system is becoming faster. So we have also performed the DFT calculation with uh, Dr. Ehsan Ali. So this paper is under review now. And uh, we, we saw that uh, the C60 when deposited on uh, cobalt. So basically there is hybridization, there is charge transfer and uh, the anisotropy is getting enhanced. And finally, your domains is getting smaller. So uh, finally, I like to summarize uh, our work that the, uh, the, the, uh, the interface between the organic molecule and the ferromagnet is very interesting. You can actually you know, do domain engineering. You can reduce the size of the domains. You can enhance the anisotropy. And this is very good for future applications, but there is a lot to be explored. And uh, just as a future outlook, I should mention that we are also looking at spin pumping in the spin hall effect because the C60, when you deposit, so it has been shown that there might be an enhancement of spin orbit coupling because of curvature. So in that case, it can lead to also the so-called spin pumping phenomena that we are looking uh, and we are finding interesting results. So with this, I like to thank you very much for your kind attention and I look forward to some interesting questions and discussions. Thank you very much.